Okay. All right, everybody. Um, I will welcome you to the October Government Operations Committee meeting. All this in order. Uh, present in chambers, we have Jody Nickerson from IT. Chris Palermo is part of the county attorney's office. Hans, Mark, Heidi, and Trish, as well as myself, and oh, Tom Bunch uh, from IT. Okay. He's hiding them. I, I, I couldn't see him. All right. So, Parker um, is excused for this evening. Uh, and then, uh, Legislator Petrus has asked uh, to be able to leave early, and, and that's absolutely fine. He has another function to attend. Um, so with that said, we have minutes to approve from uh, September. I'll take a motion for those. Thank you. Do you have a second? Moved by Mr. Strong, second by any comments. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, carried. Um, so we don't have any appointments tonight. Um, and then we do have a presentation by uh, Tom Bunn. Um, we do have a discussion on charter to follow. I'm not sure what type of update that we'll have on that, but we'll get to it when we do. Um, and then uh, I do have one announcement um, is that GO1 has been pulled uh, from this agenda tonight. Um, and we will discuss it at a future date, uh, along with the list of projects that um, are from the ARPA funds, and then also as part of the 2022 county budget. Um, can I ask a question? Um, not at this point. So we're going to move on to the IT. Um, well, I asked to go first tonight because of a family commitment. I don't know if you... I've sent several emails, you and Aileen got them. I didn't hear back, but I have something at six o'clock that I have to be to. And so I just asked, so mine would just be going over my, my thing there. If you're pulling my resolution, no problem. But if you could just look at my, um, my updates there. And if anybody has any questions, I asked this about three weeks ago. Right, I do remember that, I apologize. Um, or forgetting that at this very moment. Uh, so we'll go on to Sue's report and then we'll go to uh, Tom's presentation. Does anyone have any questions, comments about the county clerk's uh, report? Okay, I don't see any. Um, Sue, I think you are all set. Okay, I just wanna bring one thing to your attention about um, our revenue and the money we brought in this month, it was, if you looked at the full report on the website, the one that I sent to you too, it is uh, more than a million dollars than last year at this time. So um, that we took the money in. Now we don't get to keep all that money, but that is a lot of documents. And uh, it, it's crazy the amount of amount of money compared to last year, what we're doing. So a lot of work, a lot of checking, everything else. Um, the staff is keeping up as best they can. And um, so I just wanted to bring that to your attention because that money goes to central, that money goes to um, the state taxation, that money goes up to the treasurer. So it gets, it's separated into five or six parts. And so it does make a difference what we're doing um, there. It's huge in the recording office. Yeah. So that's what I have and everything else self-explanatory. And um, I guess we'll have to talk about that resolution another time then. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, any other questions? If not, Sue, thank you for your presentation or your report. Um, and we'll be in contact. Great. Thank you. All right. Tom? Yes. Take it away. All right. So good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Tom Bond, semi-newly appointed CIO for the county. 
Uh, and today, what I wanted to do was take you through the, the current state of IT. Um, I've, had, I've been in the position for about 75 days now. And kind of part of my entry plan was to do exactly what I'm presenting tonight, which is to get a good uh, landscape of what's going on in IT, formulate some priorities, recommendations, proposals. So I'm going to kind of show, share a few of those with you tonight. So uh, in terms of mission and vision of the IT department, one thing I quickly noticed on our website is we really didn't have an established mission or vision. So I wanted to get that created uh, for our department. So I did uh, look together a vision plan, kind of summarizes what we want to do and how we're going to get there. And what that says is it's a fully integrated, uh, scalable, and modernized enterprise in which all county departments, offices, and municipalities should securely access information on demand deliver government services, profit, and citizens of Cuba County in an effective, efficient manner. How are we going to get there? So we're going to deliver exceptional IT support and service to all county employees. We're going to simplify and streamline government operations, enable county employees to provide quality services to our customers, and deliver information and services to citizens at home and work in the community. Okay. So how are we going to get there? <clears throat> So what I'm going to do is I, I, I want to go over some of my findings, uh, go over the current state of the IT operations and infrastructure, what's working, identify op opportunities for improvement, and talk about those. I will then identify three main priorities that I've uncovered in my findings, and then assign a timeline for implementation to those top priorities. So in the current state, what I've determined is we definitely have an undersized IT staff. Okay? We have a lack of cross training that's going on with the department, meaning that many of our IT staff were split, obviously, between a consultant model and a county model. And I'll talk about this in a little bit in a future slide, but there's very siloed positions going on throughout the department, meaning people are specialized in their own uh, expertise, per se. And it's leaving some knowledge gaps. So I'll talk about it a little bit. Uh, lack assistance documentation and and, 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 uh, and uh, security practices that we're uh, currently uh, undergoing as well. And we are uh, we do have some degraded IT infrastructure, resulting in poor systems and network performance, a negative impact on business operations, and that's creating uh, some security and uh, business risk, which I'll talk about. So, <clears throat> in terms of overall IT priorities. We want to adjust the staffing model. I have a proposal that I want to run by this night uh, that kind of discusses a, a shift from a hybrid model to a full county model. Uh, we want to replace uh, some obsolete network infrastructure. Talk about that. Upgrade and optimize our security infrastructure and optimize our software inventory and procurement process. So as you can see, this is kind of our current staffing model. We have eight total positions in the department, uh, five of which are consultants from uh, Entree support. Uh, right now, one of the glaring uh, issues is we're lacking an on-site systems uh, level support position person. Uh, this person will be responsible for a lot of systems, systems administration, server support, patching, and all that. We really don't have an on-site person that, that handles that right now. Uh, as you can see, we have Three folks that operate in the help desk down below in the red. Um, just a level above that are two, uh, Jody and Joanne, who are county employees. And then we have two uh, two positions above that, um, an off-site systems person and an on-site network person in my cell. <clears throat> so as I mentioned, it's an undersized staff. Really, honestly, we are only equipped to handle day-to-day -day operations only, uh, meaning closing out help desk tickets and putting out fires. Uh, it's a lot of, lack of a better term, it's a lot of band-aids, patches to keep everything up and running. Uh, and that's kind of where we're at right now. Uh, as I mentioned, the staff is very specialized in what they do. Uh, they have their own unique uh, strengths, but it is leaving uh, silos and knowledge gaps within the environment. Uh, the consultant staff turnover that we've had, had experienced over the years, it creates IT system complexity and again, training gaps. So we are spending a lot of time providing knowledge transfer to a lot of these folks 
and bringing them up to, to speed on a lot of current IT, just IT operations, IT training, and then we're seeing them just walk out the door elsewhere. So a lot of our time is spent training, and then, then we, we lose that we lose that knowledge. Uh, a, a downside, obviously, to the consult model is staff can be moved at any time. On travel, say, has worked well with us to do the best. But as I said, when employees, especially at the, the lower level, the help desk level one support folks, they gain that knowledge, they they, they ultimately leave the organization. And in a consultant model, there is very little room for growth. As I, as I mentioned, it. once they reach a certain plateau, there's really no work for them to grow in the organization. So, that, so what I'm proposing is a all county model. Like I said, it would be um, asking for three additional staff of the current eight that we have now. It would formulate a core help desk group, which you'll find below circled in red. Uh, a core networking group, which you see on my left in yellow, and a core systems group on the right, circled in green. And <clears throat> really, what that is going to allow us to do is allow that our, our support staff is always on site and readily available. Those three extra positions will allow me some flexibility to essentially stretch out our support time uh, from, a, from a typical eight to five to uh, I don't want to say 24 seven, but we will get extended support throughout the night to cover such as meetings like this, to cover the 911 center, to make sure that our mission critical systems and applications stay up and right. That's very critical. And right now we are, we are paying entree um, overtime when, when these issues do occur to respond. Uh, <clears throat> there, it, it will result in an ultimate cost savings to the county. And I only say that, uh, because we are spending a lot of time on, on per hour work. So work that is outside the scope of the current folks that are in the position and overtime costs. Uh, with the addition of three county employees, it's, I wanna say it's almost even comparison in terms of salary. Um, it's hard to say because it's not a true apple to apples comparison because of longevity costs and things like that. But it's a, it's a pretty even break. There is a little slight uh, it, uh, decrease for the county if we move to that model. But like I said, the big the big cost savings would be that per hour uh, cost and the overhead. Uh, it would allow us more flexible staff, like I said, to cover multiple, multiple roles, eliminating silos. One of the goals that I want to see with the IT department is to really cross train uh, uh, across the board. Uh, right now, we have specific uh, folks that are assigned to uh, DSS, mental health, the health department. They gain specific intimate knowledge with a lot of core systems and applications, but when they're out, it leaves these gaps and we can't have that. So I think what we really need to focus on is a lot of cross training, making sure that we can backfill for each other and we can operate more efficiently as a department. Uh, moving to this model will also create growth opportunities. As you can see, if I go back, <clears throat> There is a room to grow within the organization in the lab. If you started like as a level one support, you could then move to a, a senior level position, to a network level position, systems position. There just creates that room for ultimate growth opportunity. And as I said, it's the opportunity to flex, uh, flex coverage and minimize overtime costs for the department. That's pretty much what I'm proposing uh, for long term staffing. Another priority is current network infrastructure. Uh, a lot of our current network infrastructure has reached end of life. When I say it's reached end of life, what does that mean? Um, at this point, it's, it's getting to the point where we can't call the vendor and request support, ongoing support on the existing equipment we have. So we need to think about a long-term strategy to get that equipment replaced. Um, this is the same equipment that connects all of our computers and, and phones. Pretty much any computer related equipment in the organization. We have a, a pretty major cabling issue as well in many of our uh, networking closets. Uh, a lot of that is the result of the county office building with asbestos. We have to make, you know, we could make do the best we could in those situations, but I'll show you some pictures of uh, the public safety building and we can kind of go through that. But 
we're in a, we're in a bit of a, a mess and that, and that ties back to not having the availability of staff to focus on project work. A lot of this work you'll see is done because we need a connection to that and, and it's just resulted. And I'll show you. <clears throat> As I mentioned, with uh, equipment reaching end of life, uh, vendor support will soon cease and we'll be, we'll be forced to make uh, these changes. So it's better to be as proactive as we can. And in terms of our wire, wireless infrastructure, so we have issues with the wire, and that's what I mentioned in, in bullet one, but our wireless infrastructure is um, outdated as well and segregated, meaning we have a couple different wireless vendors in the environment right now. So the plan would be to standardize and upgrade our wireless infrastructure long term. So these are just some pictures I took of our existing closets. And this is exactly what I'm talking about. Um, it's a rat's nest. Uh, and so, you know, when we have an issue, when we have to trace out a cable, we take, it takes three hours to get something done. So, you know, this is kind of kind of a challenge. And now we're, now we're wasting man hours doing something that we really shouldn't need to be doing because we haven't put the proper protocol in place to eliminate that beginning. So <clears throat> these are some of the findings that uh, I've been covered along the way. So, you know, potential impact without, you know, getting too much into the weeds. Uh, and the like equipment can create security vulnerabilities, increase support costs, loss of productivity, and then again, critical system failure. Obviously, want to avoid all of that. Proposed changes will be a full replacement of critical network hardware. I'm currently uh, researching, working with vendors, having them do a landscape of the environment, um, involving myself and Jason Porter, our, our network uh, engineer, to kind of go over the environment and, and get some quotes together on what it would take to do, to do these upgrades. Uh, obviously, clean up of network cable, cable and infrastructure. That is something that, you know, once we adopt and, and get a couple other staff members and we can clean that up in house, we just need, need time to do that. Um, the redesign of our network topology configuration. So that means essentially looking at the overall configuration inside of this equipment and making sure that it's standardized to meet our needs now and then going forward. Um, what we've had. Uh, another downside to having this consultant model is, you know, we bring a network engineer in, he makes his changes to the environment, he leaves, the next person comes in, they make their changes, and it's become almost, I almost describe it as the, the rat's nest as you saw in the photos, that's what it looks like inside of the, 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 net, the network topology configuration, which is what we're looking at right now. So hopefully within, you know, 12 months, we can procure the funds to uh, start with the refresh and a lot of the network configuration and topology changes can take place between again me and Jason talking this through but it just takes the time effort of planning which we don't have because we don't have problems so, so this is kind of a before and after I mean this is what we're up against now and that's really a typical uh, IT network composite when it, when it should look like hopefully where is this closet located? This one here? Mm -hmm. uh, that would be in the public safety building. Mm -hmm. Current server infrastructure. <clears throat> um, along the lines of uh, our network infrastructure, it's, it's outdated. Not as severely outdated, which is why I'm adding it as a third priority. It is in need of replacement. Uh, <clears throat> the biggest the biggest issue right now is with the operating systems that sit on this hardware. There is a lot of different operating systems that have reached end of life. We are still getting updates for them, but that will cease within 12 months. So we really need to look at those and uh, identify what they are, and then the best action moving forward to get those upgraded. So <clears throat> our server storage is reaching capacity. It's not at capacity right now, but again, within 12 to 24 months, we need to look at a solution. I took just a couple pictures of our, our, our storage infrastructure. You can see it's a, it's a lot cleaner than our network infrastructure. I'm just looking, showing you um, the, the, this equipment is, is, is very old. We're looking at probably between 10 and 12 years old on our servers, which realistically should work between, uh, between more than six to eight to Same impacts for uh, our uh, server infrastructure as network. 
security vulnerabilities, increased support costs, lost productivity, and critical system failure. Proposed changes we want to replace all of our outdated server hardware, our storage. We want to do pretty much a, a complete redesign and optimization of our existing server infrastructure. And what I mean by that is identifying what we are currently housing on hardware um, in our physical location, whether that be at the county office building or the public safety building, and look for different opportunities, uh, maybe to host this in the cloud or uh, to, to look at just different opportunities, A, as a call savings, and B, um, just to kind of optimize our network. So again, like I said, the timeline to do this, there's a lot of planning, especially both on the server side of things with downtime and things like that. So we'll be looking at 12 to 24 months by the time we can get approval to get funds in and then start the project. And get um, <clears throat> the final uh, priority would be a current software inventory and audit. Um, currently right now I'm, I'm underway when I say on the way, I have a list of all of the different software that we support in the county. Um, I, you know, currently, right now, all of our software is paid for out of the IT budget, which is great. But we have an issue in terms of the way our software is approved and procured. Meaning, when I hear from a department about a purchase, I'm literally handed a, a quote, and, and they, they say, okay, now we need to process that. That's fine. But I think we're just we're about three steps ahead of ourselves in that process. So meaning I want to take that back a little bit and have a discussion with them during the investigation of the software. A, are we duplicating efforts somewhere else in the county? Is this a software that the county can even support at this time? Um, just several different questions that we really need to have a more of a vetting process before we obtain a quote and go to make that purchase. So I want to. I'm, starting all these these conversations and starting this process but um, i wanted to let you know there's a huge opportunity in terms of our software to really get some cost savings here and uh, i am investigating that it's going to start with the audit but we do need to get an approval process also initiated at the same time so i am working on that and along those lines i will mention that uh, shared services as well i'm working currently working with cuba policies uh, on a potential shared service with some different pieces of software that we will have the opportunity to obtain the K-12 educational discount on a lot of this, which will give us significant, significant cost savings. So for example, I looked at one piece of software where Cisco is gonna give the county a 14% discount because we're a government entity, they will give education a 70% discount. So there's a, there's a real potential for there's some cost savings here. So I, I'm currently working with um, Lynn and uh, Tony and Matillo and Cuba Bosis to, to look at a contract and, and move forward to share the service in terms of software and potentially hardware and, and, and other services as well. So that's under, under consideration. Again, the potential impact to the software uh, procurement audit process is going to reduce, eliminate duplication. Applications need to be vetted to ensure flexibility, security, and operability with the environment, an overall reduction of cost, and a reduction of downtime by managing all software licensing. Um, just to give you a quick example of that, there's been a couple instances since I've started where we've had a server, uh, well, an application license lapse because um, we made the purchase for the department, but they were managing the license. And then they didn't realize the license was going to lapse, so they lost access. And then we had to hurry up and renew. And the, the, the process, I, I, I'm so thrilled that everything goes through IT from a financial standpoint. We just got to button up some other processes to make sure every, everything in terms of software procurement runs through IT. <clears throat> Again, uh, the proposed changes is pretty much everything I talked about. I want to identify outdated duplicated software within the environment. Consolidate, eliminate current software inventory, co term contracts. Let's get everything set to terminate on the same date or as much as we can to eliminate downtime. And like I said, establish a software procurement uh, approval process. So it'll take some time, but I think this is one of the one of the easier, more attainable goals we can accomplish quickly. And that's that's pretty much it right now. I, I have a lot more that I should could share, but these are the these are the top priorities and 
opportunities for improvement that I found. And so I'd be happy to answer any questions or concerns or anything you have. Well, um, so so let's start off, I guess. Uh, that was a wonderful presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and kind of start off at a high level, just so everyone's aware of how we kind of got to this point. Mm -hmm. um, you know, IT, for all intent and purposes, struggled for a while um, just with entree in general. Um, you know, it was difficult working with a contractor trying to support county services. Um, and so one of the reasons why this legislature looked into bringing on um, a director for IT was so we could have uh, someone uh, come in and provide hopefully a non-biased uh, business perspective um, to what our county needs and priorities were. And for those that have been up here for a while, uh, have known that we, we've been asking for priorities from IT for a long time. We have got them, but we, they didn't always mesh with what we might have been looking for. Uh, and so this list seems uh, pretty comprehensive, and I'm glad that you know, Mr. Thorne was able to uh, give us this information. Um, you know, and Tom, you know, the, the way I look at it is I'm sure there's probably quite a few questions um, that um, legislators will have. Um, you know, you talked a lot about save, potential savings and, and so on and so forth. Um, I assume that that would be one of the main questions is, is, you know, especially with like if we're going from eight employees to 11 employees, but you're saying that we could save money during that process, what would that look like? Mm -hmm. um, you know, and so how, how do you think you would be able to provide that for us to kind of look at? Yep. So really what I wanted to do was take the opportunity at night to kind of just do an information sharing gathering session. And then I'm hoping we can have a follow-up meeting to kind of discuss more of the specifics. Because I have been working with Lynn um, to gather a lot of the budgetary uh, numbers, uh, preliminary numbers. Um, it is a little bit tough. Like I said, it's kind of an apples to oranges comparison, a consultant versus a county employee due to longevity costs, health costs, and things like that. But like I said, what you're going to find is there, there is a, it's not a hidden dollar amount, but it's a dollar amount that's spent with like I said, a lot of overtime costs and costs that are leveraged out to entree to support little mini projects that have been going on over the years that, that adds up to a significant amount of money. And I think by adding these three these three positions, you're you're almost going to be at a at a wash, or it'll save the county minimal dollars at, at first in the first three years for sure. You know, I understand with the steps and um, the, the the bands that uh, set of the bands that it. It may equal out, but it's 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 pretty pretty comparable. So, but like I said, I would like to have a you know definitely have a follow up discussion. We'll bring Lynn in and really go over the numbers, uh, take a deep dive into the numbers. I can show you um, just just from the actual perspective. But I think additionally, like I said, there's a huge opportunity to save in terms of software in that process that will really has the potential to save significant dollars. And so you would think that would happen what next month that government operations to, to bring in some of that or what what is your timeline? Yes. Yeah. Um, I would be I would be hopeful to provide you all that information prior to government ops because my plan would be to bring the resolution to the next government ops for approval. Um, so I would like to have all those numbers in front of you well prior to that. I have been working with Lynn, so we have a pretty good idea of all of all the numbers. I just don't I don't want to provide something to you right now without giving a final blessing on it. So well, all right, so let's start here. Um, you know, uh, does anyone have any questions, comments, concerns about either the presentation, the timeline, um, or anything that has been spoken by by Tom? Um, now's the time to kind of raise them. He's He's uh, said he wants to hopefully bring a resolution forward, uh, possibly next month. Um, that seems plausible. Um, sometimes the 
maybe the system doesn't move that fast, but um, it seems like you're trying to go about it the right way in terms of saying, hey, what information do you guys want prior to that next meeting? Um, so hopefully it, it can be raised and then at that point. Um, let's, let's start there. So I see hands from um, Heidi, Trish, and then Tim. Betty's first. Oh, thank you. Betty's first. Um, so what we may expect to see in the numbers from you then would include sort of clearing out on trade consulting numbers, mm -hmm. if I understand the, the presentation correctly. So as you said, we go to a completely a county department with county employees. Um, so those numbers would be no longer, you know, viable in, in or in your in your in the model. Correct. Okay. Correct. Yep. Uh, on trade, on trade, salary and staff will not be part of the conversation at all. Uh, what I'm looking to do is take, we have a, a line item in the budget that's dedicated to professional services, it's basically an on trade line item. And I want to break that out individually. I'll show you how, how that looked for last year, this year, and then I kind of break out what uh, our set would, would look like for 22. Mm -hmm. One follow up before yeah, my part, peers? Absolutely. Do you, um, with, the, with that breakout, mm -hmm. Do you believe we would have that what you will present to us proposed is competitive salary so that we're not swimming again? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. okay. Absolutely. I think they're highly competitive. What well, we, uh, Lynn and I talked and we kind of brainstormed about salary and what uh, it's very competitive for, for this region for sure to attract talent. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Um, I love your presentation. I thought it was wonderful. A lot of information to digest, mm -hmm. but obviously well thought out, just in terms of like the amount of time it takes to trace out a cable and things like that. That's real time on the ground um, that translates into efficiencies. And I like that you're thinking that way. Um, the uh, One of the things that we found to be a benefit with the on-trade contract during the pandemic was this ability to scale um, when, when a lot of work had to get done quickly. It was being needed to like, ramp up assets to do that work. And I was curious what your thoughts were around that and um, in terms of bringing everything in-house. Do you still see a role for that um, third-party contractor in that way or um, not I, at all? I, re I really don't. Okay. Um, I think a lot of it has to do with pre-planning and making sure that you're, you're, you're ready to act if called upon. And, you know, I, I'll just take my experience you know, from a previous um, employer at the school district right here in Auburn. Um, you know, we were under the same constraints and we buckled down as a team. As long as you have everyone on the team with the mission and goal in mind, there really shouldn't be an issue. There really shouldn't. So I, I don't really have any concerns whatsoever. Um, you know, and that does piggyback on the question about leveraging entree for these other sort of work projects and things like that. And again, I think that ties back to the same issue is, is planning. There's, there's different ways to, to, to skin the cat. I mean, you can hire a programmer to design this application, but you can also find creative ways to handle it in another fashion. And I just think that we just kind of got to take a step out, outside the box a little bit and just think about, you know, try to try to think about it differently. So I know I'll get more questions. I appreciate your assessment on that. And I just have one other question oh, as well. That's yeah, okay. Um, one of the things I think that um, is lacking in our um, structure here is uh, somebody to handle the communications for the county and website up updates. It's kind of decentralized right now. Different departments are doing different things. Um, the clerk's office puts the report up every month. Um, I don't know what other departments do. Um, our social media presence is, there's not a centralized social media presence for the county. What, what are your thoughts on that in terms of IT's role there? In terms of IT's role, yep. Um, 
So what I would what I would say is I did have that kind of thought in mind. Um, back to my presentation. <clears throat> And so in my presentation, I, I kind of uh, proposed three different senior level, um, if you want to call them uh, the system, computer systems technician. So it's a senior level computer systems technician. One of those positions I had envisioned being more of like an administrative assistant that can handle a lot of the operational application based uh, supports. And one of those would, would, would even be the website. So um, that's kind of where I envision it. I know Max um, in the office here has been great to work with. Um, they're starting to move forward with the social media, but I, I completely understand there is not a centralized point of contact. So, you know, we could definitely take that on in IT under this proposed model. I see no issue with that. Uh, so we have Tim, uh, I think has a question. Uh, I, I have several questions too, is that okay? Chairman, two, two questions. <laughs> it's only money. It's only taxpayers. Right. Go for it. Uh, it's refreshing to, to have you here. And uh, I think that myself as, as a legislator up here for 10 years. Well, first of all, I got to say, Chris, is, thank you for coming back. He's been our IT along with Jody and everybody yeah. trying to put patchworks mm -hmm. on different systems. So thank you, Chris, for doing what you did during our uh, downfall. But anyways, is there a question in here? There's a lot of questions. Okay. And it's about big money, oh, big you. money. On, on the agenda tonight, we have Sue Dwyer who wants to do some record keeping. It's okay to talk about. Anyways, I, I have been frustrated for 10 years in regards to how much hardware do we buy? How much software do we buy? Who buys it and from what vendors? I've been asking that question up here for 10 years. And hopefully you're going to give us the answers to all those mysteries that have been going on for 10 years. I think I know why it was a mystery, but I think maybe we can get there. But between our tax base, mm -hmm. the school districts, our college, in this operation and along with the city, we should be able to get together and find out who's got the best software. And thank God you, you're going to save us. I mean, we were having a hard time buying rock salt let alone something complicated like uh, uh, a software program that opens up the the, uh, uh, the doors to the to the uh, jail. Mm -hmm. But we're being held hostage by our software people. And thank God you can maybe break that log jam. And I, I'd like to see some cooperation between our college, which has a large our IT staff, mm -hmm. and our other bodies that our same tax base pays pays all these different software programs and hardware programs from our local taxpayers. So hopefully, thank God you're here. Um, as you can see, some of us wear masks. I don't know whether you prefer a mask, but uh, normally during presentations, oh, we do you. take the mask off. <laughs> yeah. uh, I read the lips. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I read the lips. But anyways, it's cost the taxpayers a lot of money. And one of them is our copiers. And I was always for, you come from a, a system that has Xerox. Mm -hmm. We still have some Toshibas. We could have saved some money. But anyways, what do I know? Thank you. Yes. Tim, those were excellent points. We have, uh, well, thank you, Chairman. We have Mr. Hans Kutcher and then uh, Mark Strong. Wow. What are silos in your language? The silos. So, yes. When I say silos, I mean just very specific levels of expertise for these folks. So we have, we're currently, we have a network person, we have a systems administration person, we have a help desk. Well, <clears throat> in between those, there are situations that come up like a website request where currently, if we have a network person and a systems person sitting in a room and someone says, hey, I need a quick update to the website. We can't help them. And I've seen it happen a few different times just in my time here. So um, when I say that, I just mean that there's knowledge gaps that exist within the department that we can fill with the with the proposed plan. Tom, so what you are basically saying is that 
go into a more um, shared model between different users will allow you to fill some of those gaps in that service that's needed for the county. Exactly. Okay. It allows us to do cross-functional training across the entire <clears throat> department, basically. So that it doesn't really matter who's in that day, we can help mental health with their application. All right, thank you. Uh, Hans, did you have anything else or? Okay. Um, Mark. More of just a, a comment. Tom, I, as you know, I sat on your hiring committee and I wanna thank you for being true to your word, bringing this forward. Uh, it's, I'm not an IT guy, but what I'm seeing here, my limited knowledge, Looks like it's uh, a good plan, and, and thank you for doing what you're doing. Appreciate that. So uh, that we just can we go to that last slide because I think it had the appropriate terms on there, which are questions and then next steps. Yes. Um, so, what do you think is uh, appropriate for? next steps do you think that it's giving us additional information do you already have um, information that you want to provide to us so what i would like to do is i would like to finalize and shore up the the salary comparison consultant versus county but at the same time i want to provide you with the information in terms of um, other potential cost savings to the county it might offset and help you know I'll move to that that model a little bit, help it digest it a little bit easier. So I think that a follow up meeting um, in any capacity, and we'll to any capacity, just to just to go over that, um, I would I would think that I would be able to have it completed by next week. Send you all. Okay. Um. So you would be looking up. Or you would be looking at providing us that information and then having a follow up. After yes. This. Okay. Yep. But not at the committee level, but just what individual legislators or at the committee next no, month? No, I did the committee next month. I would like to take it for um, a present a resolution, resolution forward. Okay. So, what is the meeting that you want to schedule? I would probably ask to schedule it with this group um, as a group informally prior to the next meeting just to address any questions. If that makes sense. Was there a wrong thing about that? I I mean, here's the thing. Okay. So ultimately, I haven't heard anyone say that they don't like your um, your stuff mm -hmm. that they're presenting here. I, I mean, I've already heard it before. I think it sounds lovely. Um, the numbers are usually what it can come down to for certain legislators. Mm -hmm. um, and you know it's a good factor for me. With that said, we need maybe that information uh, before we sit down with you mm -hmm. to just look it over and talk. And um, I would actually even feel more comfortable with you providing it to the entire legislature. Okay. Um, with with this slideshow, because ultimately that's the the full entire legislature will make the decision. The recommendation will be in this committee. Um, in the form of a resolution that gets passed through the process. Okay. So, um, you know, it, it's it's one of those things where I think that you try to um, send out that information, uh, ask for any feedback, any questions, try to get those answered as best as you can, mm -hmm. bring a resolution forward next month that we can look at, feel, touch, talk about, mm -hmm. um, and then we'll we'll try to hammer it out as best as we can there, um, you know. And, and oftentimes, I've, I've seen it more than once up here where a lot of the questions don't come until someone has a resolution in front of them, right? Yeah. So um, I don't want to unnecessarily hold you up with um, last minute things that come out of left field. Mm -hmm. uh, you might even have to make this presentation to the full legislature at some point, which I, I think you're you know more than capable of. But uh, I'm all for this committee making that recommendation one way or another. So you could you could bring that resolution forward next month and we shoot it down. You know, so um, just keep that in mind. It's, it's not a guarantee, but I think it's I think it's a good process. Does anyone 
have any qualms, questions about that, or anything they want to add to Trish? I was just wondering if the care of room would be on this month's legislative agenda to do like a, a tentative presentation. If your if your information would be available next week, it could be circulated and people would have time to digest that. Yep. And then at least there'd be um, some you know formal presentation before it comes to the full or before it comes back to for everybody to get a chance to see that. I'm, I'm not opposed to that. Uh, you know, usually Aileen kind of sets the agenda for the, the legislative meeting. Um, Chris Blair, I'll correct me if I'm wrong. Um, so if that would be something that Tom would like to do, I would, I would you know, have to reach out to Aileen and just say, hey, is this something that's feasible just so we can kind of get everyone on board? I certainly will. Um, I will absolutely want, because I, I just don't want to, um, I want to definitely work with Lynn to make sure that we have accurate numbers to provide you first, and I'm just not sure of that timeline. And so when I have that available to you and the potential cost savings, I'm going to put it all into an email. I will summarize this meeting, provide the PowerPoint, ask for any questions or feedback, and then I will also touch base with you about the steps. That's wonderful. And just so you are aware, so the full ledge meeting would be in two weeks, so you would have it. You, if you thought you could have it ready for next week, you would have next week. All right. So, uh, Heidi, and then Tim. Um, I'm just uh, curious for Tom's sake it, it, to confirm that that timeline meets our budget timelines as well. So he knows that, you know, waiting for a resolution to come before this committee doesn't um, uh, keep you from missing budget timelines for 2022, correct? Right, that's true, yeah. Uh, this this process would be like we go hand in hand with the budget, mm -hmm. I assume. Yep. And, and you wouldn't be in conflict with any of that timeline? The, I, and I, I believe, correct me, I, I believe the entry contract is due to expire on the 31st of uh, December. So, okay. Yep. So that's good then. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. And we usually start to hand them down into the budget more in November, uh, November ways and means. Um, I don't know, maybe Keith has something on their agenda for this month. I think it's unlikely, but I haven't seen their agenda yet. Um, so we'll just assume that it's November uh, and that if we were to ultimately make a recommendation from the committee um, for that process to move forward, then uh, I assume it would be included in that initial budget proposal. Got it. And I did speak to Keith today. We did have a budget meeting. So I did bring this up to him and kind of put it in our presentation as well. So great. Great. Okay. Good. Uh, Tim. Um, the rat's nest that you have in the closets. Um, this building was pre tech. Mm -hmm. I know that uh, some of the building, uh, building and grounds, <laughs> they've got some engineers that are looking at the building. Yep. See whether it's functional, whether it's too far gone, where we're going. Mm -hmm. So I would like to see and work with them that if for some reason we do decide to go to a one story building or something that's maybe a little more operable. Mm -hmm. I mean, the elevators don't work normally yeah. in this building. So it would be nice to lay out that highway that you need of wire. Oh, yeah. So you might want to want to talk to them too for your dream, you know, brand new. Okay. Yes. There's yeah, some absolutely. money in the pipeline for things. Excellent. Um, any other questions about this specifically? Uh, I think if, if not, then we'll move on to your report and mm -hmm. start hammering away at that. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, really, the report that I did provide, um, I would just like you to kind of review, consume, and, and really, if you have any questions for me, I'd be happy to provide you with any uh, specific detail. But 
it uh, revolves around a lot of what my presentation um, kind of centered on, which was improving government operations. So you see a lot of the different things that I am working on uh, <clears throat> to try to improve some of these processes that are either broken or in need of improvement. So, uh, yeah. One of the things I do want to highlight, especially for Trish, uh, that we have talked about a lot um, was to uh, work with the Harm Human Resources uh, Department to develop an employee portal for initial onboarding process. Um, that's that's awesome because it's something that we've talked about for so long on how to kind of centralize that. And right now, I don't think there is any. So you have each department head kind of the you know laptop to their own devices. I mean, the, the employee that's hired does have to fill out paperwork and. I think sometimes we're just given a huge binder and sign it and you never read it. Uh, you know, this could be really beneficial. And so I appreciate you, you know, looking at that, of course. Yeah, it was one of the first things that I noticed going through the process myself. You know, obviously I, I definitely saw the need for opportunity there. So what we're gonna do is <clears throat> utilize an application called Formstack. They have a portal option for able to upload all of the documentation in there and essentially provide that to the um, employee prior to even showing up for the first day. So a lot of this, you know, paperwork that we're spending a few hours getting them prepped for that day, they can take a tour of the building and you know, uh, meet with some departments and kind of, you know, take advantage of the day instead of filling out paper. So, yeah. Yeah, very cool. Um, any questions for Tom on his report? Sir? Just a comment. Oh, because, just um, you know, it's, it kind of blew me away a little bit that you're um, finding that there are systems without multi-factor authentication. We sh we should just plain be there. Mm -hmm. Period. You know, most of us we're doing the right thing on our household computers and phones mm -hmm. and our multi-factor. You know, so. Glad you're here. <laughs> that's, that's a big miss by somebody somewhere. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, Tom, thank you uh, for this. This was wonderful. Absolutely. Great job. Thank you, thank you guys. Uh, next up, uh, before we get into the department reports, um, I've kept this discussion on the charter here each month. Um, Last month, we kind of talked about what it would look like to bring in a person to talk about it. Uh, I don't know how far it has been along. I haven't been informed. Uh, and I'm not entirely sure how much progress we can make. Uh, let's see. Now, it would leave us November and December um, to tackle that along with maybe a foreign government. Um, I hate to say, you know, that dreaded term kick the can. But there, we, we don't have people to work on it, and the people that we do have are in the process of it. Um, and it has taken a long time. I mean, some of it was kind of a natural delay because we had to wait for the census uh, figures to come out and be released. And I, I don't even think they were released until like two months ago or something, um, roughly. So that's half the battle. And then the other half of the battle is uh, what form of government um, and uh, how many legislators we could potentially have up here? Is it you know, 11 to 13? So it's a reapportionment of three, I guess, in form of government, uh, which includes charter, county executive, maybe a charter without a county executive. It's it's a lot. There's no way that we're going to be able to process all of that information in the next two months. And just want to be fair, it's not that we can't. But there's going to be potentially a handful of new legislators that are going to come in, uh, you know, January 1st. Um, and maybe they would be better suited to know uh, what form they are, they are preferable to, as opposed to us uh, trying to square away in two months that I just don't see it. I could be wrong. I, you know, I could have. Some miracle drop in my desk with my November's government operations meeting, and we have a resolution and it's all figured out. Um, 
but I just don't think we're going to get there. I mean, Chris uh, Palermo, I know you've been working with Mr. Petrus a little bit. Um, you know, do you want to give any status update? I'm not trying to put this on you. I just, I just no, sure. I'm ha happy to. You know, we've had a couple conversations now over the past month, I guess. And, um, you know, I know one of the options I think that he informed the full legislature of was uh, the, the president's one. I would point out that, you know, that there's several forms. Um, with slight variations uh, under alternative forms of county government law. Presently, we operate under under county law. I mean, we've got the boilerplate default, you know, rules that all counties at one time or another operated by, and uh, you know, the state has or the state legislature has enacted alternative forms of county government law, which gives you some model templates that you can choose from. Um, you know, there, there's also multiple ways that you can go about determining which one you can form a commission uh, that can be done by this body uh, on its own. You can decide that you know you want to pull so many people from business, from academia, from um, you know agriculture, from all, all sorts of places. Uh, put together a commission and let them you know work on the project. You can mix and match different components from different portions. You know, once you start going down the road of Kind of modifying any of those default templates, you know, then you're almost getting into your own custom charter, and you know, you're going to determine how this county government will operate as opposed to perhaps, you know, any other in the state. So, you know, it's kind of a big undertaking, and you know, I think that probably by and large, most counties do solicit input from its citizenry, you know, through through commissions. Um, you know, the task the group here. Uh, in addition to everything else that you have to do, that's a, that's a big job. Right. And there's a lot of ways it can look, I guess, is the short answer. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. Uh, this is the first time I've heard that. Uh, Could I make one more point? Yeah. Uh, so, so I know that there's a little bit um, of, this is really kind of a little bit of, a little bit of distaste for the, the term president. Uh, I will point out that under alternative forms, county government law, in the definitional section, uh, whether it's president, those are all characterized as a county executive. So, you know, I mean, that's just the one name for that particular portion of the, of the uh, chapter, um, but they would be referred to as a county executive. So I mean, you're not electing a president, but that's, you know, presents some distaste to some members of the board. Right. Okay. Uh, any questions? Uh, okay. about this? Uh, Chris, uh, you know, I like the name president. I mean, it would be would go good. But anyways, um, uh, if nothing else, I mean, I've, I've been on this board for a little bit, and you know what happens? I, I've seen us pass budgets, taxpayers' dollars, with a minority because of the weighted vote. So we know the form of government that we have is is not the majority of, of the people by the people for the people. It gets, you know, uh, we, we've got to change the way the voting system, especially when we appoint a chair. If you can get a couple of weighted votes, uh, you can, you know, or more or less dictate who goes into the chair, whether or not you have the majority of the board or you don't. A lot of us vote knowing that, that the weighted vote is, is there for the chair. And, uh, but anyways, I'd like to see one female vote, one man, you know what I mean? I'd like to have us equal footing, uh, no matter what, what we have up here uh, in the future. One one man, one vote, but that was that was an insult. I completely took that separately. I know. Wow, yeah. there's right. some election watch. There's this major yeah. massive social change. Yeah, project yeah. there. <laughs> All right. Well, I was trying to be courteous. I, no, I understand. I'll no. probably be in front of the ethics board for saying something. I, <laughs> oh, okay. Only got two months left. Yeah. Well, they keep a lid on it. Okay. okay. Two months. All right. So, uh, Tim, before you go, we got Trish that wants to ask. Yeah. So, one of the reasons I think it's important for us to have somebody running 
the county is for consistency from one year to the next, I guess, um, above the political process. So I just wanted to ask, because we don't have that structure in place yet, has there been precedence in the past of um, appointing chairs for two-year terms versus just one to lend some consistency there uh, beyond just one year? Appointing our chair? Yeah. I don't, I, to the best of my knowledge, no, but there are provisions for that in county law. Not, not, I mean, you know, you could certainly write that into your own charter. Mm -hmm. um, you could modify any of the alternative forms of county government to include that, but there are provisions already for that in, in county law. And I believe it just takes into the local law. And I think it takes a year before it can take effect, but you can elect for a two So election. it's not something we could do currently, like when we elect the chair for, for next year. Could we choose to do it for a two year term right now? Would we have to do it for I, one year? Give me, give me like three minutes and I'll give you an answer. But my, my, my recollection is that you have to wait, but I'll tell you in a few minutes. Okay. And I don't know how people would feel about that anyway, but personally, I think it's, you know, it's, it's good to have some consistency there that yeah. when we're working on projects that span multiple years. Um, I don't know. Trisha is adding something. I mean, if, if you had one person, one vote, you know, you could have them all by a year. But I mean, the way it is done now, I, I it, it's not politics is politics. If you know the powers there, you can get a group together and put yourself in for all by year. So as long as it's everybody and it's a fair fight. To get the chair. Gotcha. So, well, we will, um, while Chris is uh, researching that, we'll kind of move on. Um, you know, just be on the lookout if something kind of gets put in front of you for next month. It does. If not, I'm okay too. Um, it's going to be a, a pretty busy couple of months with the budget coming up. So I, don't, I don't know how we can tackle both. Um, but then I could be proven wrong on that. So uh, we will move on to the Board of Elections. Um, Cheryl or Kate, I don't know if either one of them are on. Um, it says here that they are going to training classes. It's not entirely sure if they're here. Can you see a list of people present? Hmm. Jody? I'm sorry. Can they are not on remotely, Ryan. All right. So, did anyone have any questions for the Board of Elections? Yes. Am I going to win? I think one of them would say, hopefully, and one would probably say, hopefully yeah. not. Okay. 50 50 chance I'll take it. That's right. All right. All right. Does any legislators have any questions for the Board of Elections uh, that they want to pass along? If not, we'll move on. Uh, Amanda, you are up. Good evening. Uh, nothing new to report. Uh, just, just besides me and Sheila are both working remotely, but I will be back in the office on Monday. Um, so thank you for any patience with that. And that's it. Great, thank you. Um, Amanda, one question I had passed to me was if this is the month where we do our student uh, government, um, and if so, are we having them in chambers? Is there going to be a mask requirement? Are we, um, what are we doing for that? Uh, uh, so we will not be doing student government day uh, this year. Uh, we're kind of looking into maybe a different way to do it next year as well. Just maybe trying to slim it down to maybe students that are more interested um, in certain elements of the government and trying to get, uh, really the involvement of people that have certain interests. So uh, we're just kind of looking at ways to rework it, but we did put it off for this year. Okay. And that was an administrator decision? Yes, it was. All right, um, any other questions? Wait, so, yes. Yeah, Tim. I mean, Student Government Day has been the best day up here uh, for 12 years that I've been around. and. Uh, 
the administrator, I don't know whether, I mean, this room is kind of tight, but I mean, we have other facilities such as Emerson Park that people can spread out and not be too contagious, I hope. So I'd like to have that re looked at or at least a debate over it. I would push the contact email. Maybe we contacted you, Jeremy. I don't have any sales of that apparently. And it, as she just well, said, it was an administrative decision. All right, any other questions for Amanda? All right, move on. Thank you, Amanda. Chris Palermo, you are up. Uh, as you can tell by the agenda, I don't have uh, much to report. I do have some catching up to do. Um, I'm just happy to be here. I'm <laughs> glad to see you. Glad to have you here. County Attorney's Office of Vernon School we approved, so that's good. Um, we got a good well, we, 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 right. We, we lost one, as you know. Yes. Um, so that's that's a challenge at the moment. Um, we left. Basically, he mentioned oh, last month when we went downstairs. Yep. And so yep. you guys are currently looking for what in that office? Well, that's a good question. Um, you know, we've asked Mike Russell to come and take a look at that position and, and see what, uh, you know, um, I guess to kind of piggyback off Tom's discussion, you know, we've implemented some uh, on paperless, everything scanned electronically, filed, uh, calendaring, you know, those types of things. Um, the position has sort of grown. Uh, so that's something that I probably would, once I get an answer from Mike, we'll bring back to this committee uh, for some discussion in executive session. Very good. Good to see you, brother. Thank you. All right. Any questions for the county attorney's office? So you were researching that for us. I, 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 if it's a, you can always send it out to us after the meeting. It's not. I have an answer. It's a, county law provides it. It can be. A, remember, originally supervisors were elected for two-year terms, so you could elect a chairman in an even number year. You could pass a local law saying we'll select the chair in an even number, even number year, and they would serve for the duration of their term. Because of the four year terms, that kind of mixes things up a little bit. There's also some case law that says uh, since this is a special law, we can do, or we can make it a three year term if we'd like. So you can enact a local law that makes the position of chair, you know, keeps it one year, makes it two years, three years. Um, you know, that would be entirely up to this body by local law. It's a possibility. One person, one vote, please. Uh, thank you, Chris. Um, and we'll look forward to hearing about that uh, maybe in the future. Okay, so next up is uh, veterans. And, uh, you know, one of the things is there's an ongoing search. I think that uh, they had last week, they had interviews, they interviewed all the candidates. Um, and ultimately, they'll bring forward the one to this committee to um, potentially hire, just like they did with uh, weights and measures. Um, Chris, that was on the agenda for I saw it Tuesday night. And I forget the gentleman's name that it was, but for the weights and measures, yeah, mm -hmm. that, that that was a yeah last minute resolution that came before judicial and public safety. Right, but they had gone through that process and then they submitted the resolution um, for that. I believe so. I, I really missed a good part of that. Right, sorry. Right. But it will be the same thing. You'll see it from us. It could be potentially next month. Maybe it will be something we can have ready for uh, ways of mean or the full ledge if it's time sensitive, which I think it is, but I don't know if they're 100% ready yet. I, I wouldn't be able to participate in the interviews. Um, I, I can do it with this one, uh, but I know that Mike uh, and Larry did the interviews and we did provide some, um, you know, explanation of the preferred candidate and why we should why they chose them. I'm comfortable with that. But with a better director position, I, I would love to have an opportunity to meet the candidate. Um, that is being recommended. I think we did that once before. Yeah. Um, if there's 
an opportunity there um, before we take a vote on it. Yeah, definitely. Um, yes, we did. We did that at one point. Was it at the we full did time? Time? IT's position. Yes, yes. So yeah. IT position we did. Yeah. So if if that candidate's ready, maybe we can have them come to uh, full IT meeting for me. Uh that's gonna leave, but uh, you know, go from there. Not in favor of that. Okay, then I don't know if they'll have a resolution already. I'm not I'm not entirely sure. So this is for which position? Veterans. That, 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 veterans. Where are we with the where the we just the interview with they're still I think they've done all the I think they've done all the interviews and uh, they're going to bring forward a candidate and Trish suggested doing a meet and greet uh like we did with Tom and that could potentially happen at this month's full legislative meeting. The process did we how many bets were on this committee? Jim Orman, Mark, um for for two. Um, Jim Orman represents the Veterans Advisory Board. And then uh, we had uh, myself. Who else did we have on here? And we have a few. Uh, Aileen is on the administrator. The guy yesterday. Uh, okay. And the gentleman, Mike. Mike uh, Russell Mike was Russell. on there. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, uh, is there any other business to come before this committee um, tonight? Yes, there is. What's that? Well, there's been a lot of discussion about public safety and uh, government ops in regards to an ambulance service. It seems to be a statewide problem, countywide problem, citywide problem. Hopefully, maybe we can come up with a metropolitan system to, for public safety that can help the towns, the city, and everybody else. So hopefully we can have a discussion about this before it becomes an emergency and maybe we'll, we, we make poor decisions when we have that kind of pressure on us. So hopefully we can review that sooner than later. Jim, I think that um, last night, Denise began to talk about those kinds of issues developing um, around shared services or the lack thereof and some changes at the um, uh, Judicial and Public Safety Committee meeting, as did Dale Greer. So I think that committee would have, I, I don't think Ryan would be able to answer to that the well, way. I um, think as alleged, we represent no. different towns. And I, think it, I think that discussion should be Public safety is everybody's concern, and I think everybody should have a voice in right. where we're going with that. I, I think I think you had to leave early last night, and um, that that was a there was a, a long, strong part of the discussion did indeed center around that. Well, I thought Mr. Vitale, the chair at the point, had told the EMO director that he didn't really want to hear it at the meeting. You you did get into it after I left. I know that it was discussed. It, it was discussed at length. It was discussed at length um, right. in terms of where we are, how we arrive there, what we can and can not do or think about doing with the city of Auburn. So yes. more was discussed. Well, I mean, I was here for Denise's saying that uh, for the call volume, now that uh, city has decided to go with a different model that she might have to hire somebody at, at, uh, to answer those those calls so that's an added, added cost to that that service so <coughs> i'd like to have maybe everybody involved in public safety great all right um any other business to come before this committee uh hearing none i'll take a motion to adjourn so moved by Mr. Strong, seconded by Ivy. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Chairman. Chris, great to be back, huh?